What is up guys, Randomonium here. So I decided to uh, make a video on general fantasy LCS strategy because I've been getting a lot of questions from people that are uh, really similar and uh, I feel like this is a, a really common thing that people don't understand some of you know the, the strategy behind fantasy LCS. And I love your guys' comments, but I think the most common uh, comment that I've seen is should I go for this guy who is an A tier player or should I go for this guy who's an A tier player? And when it comes down to people who are kind of the same tier, people who are going to get about the same number of fantasy points, it really depends. It's not something that I can answer in black and white, yes you should go for this player over this player. It depends on your team and it depends on your opponent's team week to week. So this video is going to focus on strategy week to week to help you make those decisions on whether you should go for, you know, a given A tier player versus another A tier player. So this will hopefully help you guys um, kind of get a little bit more insight into my strategy and get a little bit more insight into why I would recommend you go certain players over other players. You know, I still want you guys to ask me questions if you've got questions, but hopefully this will answer a lot of your guys' questions ahead of time and help you guys get a better insight into, you know, kind of the pros and cons for different strategies in Fantasy LCS. So the first thing I do for a given Fantasy League for a given week is I look at my opponent for that week and I try to match up player for player with him to figure out if I've got the advantage or he's got the advantage. So the big thing that I look for is I look for people on my team who are on the same team as people as on his team. So for example, I'm going to match up Hanser and Bjergsen with Wild Turtle and Biofrost. And the reason why I do this as opposed to matching up Hanser with Flame and Bjergsen with Pobelter is because it eliminates the variability that can happen week to week, right? You're not, you're never guaranteed that someone's going to win a game. Upsets do happen. But you are guaranteed that week in and week out, players on the same team are going to get around the same amount of fantasy points as other players on their team. So, for example, Bjergsen, week in, week out, he should get about the same amount of fantasy points as Wild Turtle. And actually, he gets slightly more on average. So that gives me a very slight advantage when I'm looking at that matchup between Bjergsen and Wild Turtle. And then if we're looking at the other TSM players, I've got Hanser versus Biofrost. Well, top laners, in general, get more fantasy points than supports. So that gives me a pretty strong advantage there. You know, Hanser should get more points than Biofrost, regardless of whether or not TSM wins. And then if we're looking at the, the other matchups we've got, so for example, I've got two Immortal players. I've got Dardock and I've got Cody Sun. He has two Immortal players. He's got Flame and he's got Pobelter. So again, I'm going to match up, you know, 80 carries with mid laners because the, that's the most common, you know, high point scores in fantasy LCS. And I feel like Cody Sun uh, does get more fantasy points on average than Poe Belter, so I do have a slight advantage there. And then top laners and junglers also typically get around the same amount of fantasy points. But I think that Dardoch does have an advantage over Flame. Dardoch's been getting slightly more fantasy points than Flame, so I've got an advantage there. So now we're down to, you know, kind of the last couple players. So the last players we've got is I've got Expecial. He's a Dignitas player as my support. And uh, my opponent, he's got Chaser, who's also a Dignitas player at Jungle. So this is where I've got a disadvantage, right? Chaser, uh, the jungler, should get more fantasy points than Expecial, the support. So I've got a disadvantage here between this matchup. And then finally we've got uh, Caps. And uh, Reckles, we both got Fnatic players who are in our flex spot. I slightly give the advantage to Caps. I feel like he's really been dominating the laning phase a lot. So I think that he should outperform Reckles ever so slightly. And then for our teams, that's kind of a wash. Both Splice and Fnatic both have pretty even uh, weeks this week. So I think they should get around the same number of fantasy points. Um, so that's kind of an even matchup. So you see I've got the advantage with my TSM players. I've got the advantage with um, my Immortals players. I've got a slight advantage with the Fnatic players. We're even on our teams, roughly. And I've got a disadvantage with uh, my Dignitas players. So overall, I have a net advantage over my opponent this week. 
And this is how I would advise you guys approach every single week. Not every week is going to match up as well as this does. Like this one, we have almost mirrored teams, but you should be able to do this to a little to a little bit of an extent with every single team with every single week. So this is the first step that you guys need to take when approaching your strategy for a given week. Once you figure out whether or not you've got an advantage or a disadvantage or whether you're, you're not sure, it's something kind of in the gray area, then you need to start looking at whether you want to go for more risk or less risk. So typically, the higher risk you go, the higher reward you could potentially get. But you don't want to go for risky plays if you don't need to, right? If you've got an advantage, you want to try and minimize your risk. You only want to go for risky plays if you feel like you're at a disadvantage. So what are some things that are kind of risky that you can go for? Well, the biggest risk that you can take is having a lot of players that are on the same team. So we can look at this team that I've got. I've got three Dignitas players, and I've got three Cloud9 players, and then I've got one Fnatic players. So pretty much, if Dignitas has a really bad week, or Cloud9 has a really bad week, then that is going to really hurt um, my team for this fantasy league. So what you really have to look at uh, whether or not you, you're willing to take that risk is look at the matchups. So for example, if I'm looking at uh, Dignitas, they've got FlyQuest, which is, that's a bit of a rough matchup, right? FlyQuest has been playing well, and CLG. CLG's been playing, you know, kind of hit or miss. So they've got one good matchup and one probably bad matchup. So not ideal. So I might want to be looking to try and minimize my risk, and I might want to try and substitute out one of these players, one of these Dignitas players for week three, or maybe even two, if I can get some good uh, EU players or maybe somebody else on my bench. Next, going over to Cloud9, Cloud9's got a really favorable week. They're going up against Envy and they're going up against Echo Fox. So having three players from Cloud9 is actually advantageous for me. I'm willing to take that risk because Cloud9 has a really easy week. So they should get a decent amount of fancy points. So I most likely will keep all three of my Cloud9 players for this team, and I might sub out one of my Dignitas players just to try and minimize that risk. And you can see that I do the similar things for every other um, team that I've got. So, you know, I've got three Immortals players for this one, so I'm going to be looking at, all right, they've got Phoenix 1 and FlyQuest, so I really want to take that risk because FlyQuest has been playing really well. So I might look and see if I can sub out one of these Immortal players. And that's what you have to do. You have to see how you stack up against the enemy team. You also have to see how you stack up against uh, with your team. And you also have to look for synergy or dissynergy um, in the matchups, right? So, for example, um, Immortals is going up against Phoenix 1. So I look over on the other side and I see, all right, they've got a Phoenix 1 player on their team. And they also Phoenix 1 gets, uh, going up against TSM. And I've got TSM players on my team. So if Immortals beats Phoenix 1 and TSM beats Phoenix 1, then that means that I've got a really huge advantage. You know, their, his uh, Phoenix 1 player is not going to get that many fancy points, and I'll get a ton of fancy points on my team. So if I feel like that's a favorable matchup, if I feel like Immortals and TSM are going to beat Phoenix 1, then I want to keep those Immortals and Phoenix 1, or sorry, those Immortals and TSM players on my team because that's a really advantageous matchup for me but likewise if i felt like phoenix one is going to come out and just you know dominate tsm and dominate immortals then i'd probably want to try and minimize my risk and maybe sub out some of those immortals or tsm players so now those are the questions you really have to ask yourself you know kind of week in and week out Typically, though, you want to try and go more for a, uh, a balanced team comp, right? That kind of minimizes your overall risk for your team. So this is kind of a good example of that. You can see I've got a bunch of different players from a bunch of different teams. The only uh, team where I've got two players from that team is Dignitas. I've got Laud and I've got Someday for this league. So what this basically means is that regardless of how um, each team does... If one of them does really badly, if there's a bunch of upsets in a particular week, I'm not going to lose that many fantasy points because I don't have too many eggs in one basket, right? Even if Immortals has a really bad week, that's only one of my players. I can still win if only one of my players does poorly. You know, if, uh, you know, Splice has a bad week, I still can win because that's only one player. It would take multiple upsets for me to do poorly 
uh, this week. So I feel pretty confident. As long as I feel like I match up pretty well player to player with my opponent, this is a really strong uh, team because I've minimized risk. There's very few situations where I'm going to have so many upsets that I could actually lose this week. So that's what you ideally want to go for. You ideally want to have a lot of variety in your team because that uh, minimizes your risk. The only time that you want to try and go after a lot of players on the same team is if that team has a really favorable week, like for example Cloud9, a very favorable week this week, or if you feel like you're at a disadvantage. If you feel like you're disadvantaged, you got to put more eggs in a single basket. you got to go for those Hail Mary plays, and you have to go for more risk. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that lets you know like what my thinking is and what my strategy is, you know, week to week. And hopefully that'll help you guys make a better decision with your facing like should I go for this player or that player. Hopefully this will answer the question for you because it's really about how much risk do you want to go for? How well do you match up against your opponent, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on the channel, Please subscribe if you have any questions on strategy or if you have your own fantasy LCS strategies that I haven't talked about yet, leave a comment below. I love getting more advice and new strategies from different people. It only helps us as a community. So definitely leave a comment below. I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Randmonium signing off.